Edith LeBert here backstage with George Hardwick after another quick night at the office. After your last victory, you said you wanted to be active. Well, here we are, three months later, one more W on your record. You must be happy with that. It was, it's like deja vu from the, last, from the last show. Obviously different. The Harry was fighting first. There's a few things I had to be aware of. But in terms of fight, the preparation, it was like deja vu. And then in the fight, the same rhythm, the same breakdown, the same getting that finish in the second round. It's, it's like really uncanny. I don't feel like I've been through a fight, or like a fight week. I've been through like a, a light week of training. It's very weird. With that said, you must have your eyes firmly on the title at this point. Yeah, I think there's, there's a few at the top need to sort it out. Maybe some, I don't know, how McColgan's gotten in. Maybe he's come off an injury or something. But I know people at the top need to sort it out. But I'm going to keep fighting. I'm not going to, if I get in line for a title, and there's no fights until the title, I'm going to keep fighting. And if someone beats me, then I'm not ready to fight for a title. I don't like this modern mentality of trying to hang around. No, I'll sit back because I might get a title fight, negotiating, sitting on the shelf. I want to keep a fucking Chuck Liddell mentality. That's what I want to keep. If I want to fight, keep fighting, keep winning. If I'm next in line for the title, well, if someone can beat me, then they're next in line for a title. You know, if they're next in line for a title, I can beat them. Well, then I'm next in line for a title. You know, I just want to fight regularly. That's the and, you, and you mentioned Mick Hogan, our, our champion. What are your thoughts on him, and where do you see yourself? You know, like how, how would you envision this fight with him? I think he's a sound lad. Seeing him, uh, him and Paul Hughes about the hotel. You know, Paul Hughes is a fan of the pizza crack. But yeah, he's a sound lad. Very good striking. I like his style. That's a fight I would love because I've had a couple easy fights now that have not easy in name, not easy in record. They just panned out easy. Mm -hmm. I would love a hard fight. You know. I, I was watching the battle between Hughes and Charrier last night, and I, I, can, oh, I can only imagine that good feeling after, of just death after a five-round horrible fight. So I want to fight the best person who can put me through that. Wait a minute. Your brother's asking for easy fights. You're asking for hard fights. <laughs> <laughs> he's, had, he's had a rough schedule. His, uh, his, like, his uh, belly's hurting. I think after a few Guinness, it'll either be a lot worse or a bit better. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So I might get in trouble for this, but I can't help myself. I love to play a matchmaker once in a while. I know you used to fight welterweight. Your brother used to fight lightweight. And I know two brothers. You've probably heard of them because they're also on this card tonight, I, the Fliglags. I, I think I saw them in the, uh, the changing rooms, yeah. yeah. I mean, I just feel like there would be like two super fights, brothers versus brothers. Yeah, it would be sick if uh, the weights worked out. That would be a brilliant card, wouldn't it? Maybe catch weight or... Yeah, we'll see, maybe. <laughs> You know, or maybe if, if I go to Welter and Harry goes to Lightweight, they'll have to pay for my kebabs, pay for our pizza and <laughs> club up. That'll be a sick fight. You know, I like their styles too. I like the real fighters. You know, they'll be great. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much.